The days are getting shorter, the weather's getting cooler, and I want to make sure that the 340 is ready for winter. Now, as some of you may know, we actually have a third car that we would normally drive in the winter, but the problem is, well, that car has had some problems recently, so I want to make sure that the 340 is all set. I'm going to walk you through how I would prep this car for winter, and maybe you guys can try some of these tips on your own car as well. In the winter, visibility is key. I picked up a set of genuine BMW wiper blades on Amazon for around $40. On the F30, you'll notice the blades hit the hood if you try to lift them. You need to put your wipers into service mode by hopping in the car and holding up the wiper stock for 5 seconds. Now you can easily lift them up to change the blades. Simply pinch these tabs and pull out and up. Hook the new blade on from the top, then press the tabs in so the blade snaps in place. Here's what those tabs look like. Pro tip, change them one at a time. If the arm snaps back and hits the windshield without the blade on, it'll break the glass. On the topic of visibility, I've been wanting to try out a glass sealant to add some hydrophobic properties to the windows, and this one had really good reviews online, so we're gonna give it a try today and see how it does. Now, unlike some spray-on products like Rain-X, this stuff requires a little bit of prep first, so I'm gonna go ahead and clay bar the windows, and we'll check back here in a minute. I sprayed some water on the glass to lubricate the clay. Clay bar will remove the tree guts and bug sap that a regular car wash won't. Don't forget to get under the wipers now that you know how to get them out of the way. I never thought of using clay bar on glass, but take a listen to this. Don't forget your sunroof if you have one. Next, I'm wiping the windows down with isopropyl alcohol. Not only do we want to remove the solids, but also any wax or remnants of previous glass treatments. With the decontamination complete, we're ready to apply the product. Now, according to the label, it says to apply it in an overlapping crosshatch pattern, let the first coat dry to a haze, then immediately follow it up with a second coat, let that dry to a haze, and then finally buff it off with a clean microfiber towel. I'm using this little applicator pad to apply the product. I know someone's going to comment that I shouldn't have worn jeans to do this. I wasn't anticipating that I'd be leaning on the car so much, so I tried to keep my sweater pulled down to keep my pants from getting scratched by the car. I'm not gonna lie, this stuff was a chore to buff off and the whole installation process took about an hour, but man, look at these results. If this is how good it works with the car sitting still, I can just imagine how well it'll perform at highway speed. That was a lot of work. Let's switch to something easy, the floor mats. So I've always wanted a set of these WeatherTech mats and Keith Motorsports was kind enough to bless us with a set for this video. So thanks guys, I appreciate it. And uh, my car actually came with the genuine BMW rubber mats, which I really like because they've got this like red trim on the side that perfectly matches the seats. The problem with these is that they don't have any side protection. And if you've ever gotten your car after walking in snow, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So with the WeatherTech ones, these are vehicle specific and you'll see it's got like this tray around the edge so that your carpets stay nice and clean. To install these, all you need to do is swap out the factory Velcro anchors with the hook style ones provided in the kit. Use a large flathead to twist them out and then twist the new ones in so the hooks are pointing backwards. Then snap the mat into place. This set comes with the rears as well. 
Since I'm gonna be using the heat in my car for the next six months or so, I wanna make sure that my cabin air filter is good to go. Now, if you have an F30, it's gonna be in the passenger footwell underneath the glove box. If you have an E90, it's gonna be under the hood. I can link my E90 cabin air filter video down below. Remove two 10 millimeter nuts from the footwell. Whichever idiot did this last time never put them back in, so I'm pretending to take them out in this shot. Pull this cover down and unplug the 12 volt outlet. By the way, did you know you had an outlet down here? Unplug the footwell light. Remove two T20 screws for the filter cover and pull it down. Before you install your new filter, just take note that these are directional, so this does need to go in a specific way. Now it gets a little confusing because if you go on the forums, there's like a multiple page debate about which direction this thing is actually supposed to go. And if you look at BMW's official service documents, they're not very clear either, but thankfully, Man has cleared this up for us with photo instructions. So if you look at this um, piece of paper that it comes with, it shows that the airflow is going towards the front of the car, the way that the car would be traveling. So if you look at your air filter, on the bottom there's a print of an arrow. That arrow needs to be facing forward as though this filter is driving forward down the road. And it makes sense because if you look at my old filter, all the leaves and debris are on the outside of the curve. So it makes sense that the air will be coming out from out of the car through here and through the inside of the bend. So whichever idiot lost the 10 millimeter nuts also installed this one backwards last time. <laughs> Another pro tip, bend the filter to that curved shape first and it'll go in much easier. If your car has a sunroof, you wanna clean out your sunroof drains. You have one on either side on the F30, and you're supposed to clean these out periodically so that they don't get clogged up. Now, my friend Brian has the same car as this, and like a year ago, uh, his drains were all clogged up, and he ended up with two inches of standing water inside the car. And the amount of damage that it did probably would have totaled the car had it been anyone else, but of course it's Brian, and he used the opportunity to swap the interior, but you don't wanna go through all that. Clean out your drains, I'm gonna show you how to do it. So in case you don't know what I'm talking about, there's basically a drain hole here and there's one on the other side and that goes down through your A-pillar out this little hole right here in the door jam. Now I always just use this can of compressed air. I'll put the hose inside the drain and we'll see if anything comes out. I already kind of messed around with this last night so I'm not sure how much it's actually going to come out on camera but I'll give it a few sprays and we'll see if anything comes out. <laughs> So as you can see, we got some crumbs and stuff that came out. Now, like I said, I already kind of messed around with this last night, so um, I wasn't expecting a whole lot to come out, but this dirt here came out just now and you can see some on the ground as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. If your drains are really clogged, you can even use string trimmer line to physically push the stuff out, but that wasn't an issue here. When you're done, you can pour some water down the drain. If they're clear, the water should flow out freely from the bottom. Let's talk really quick about batteries. This is the time of year that people tend to have battery issues. Now, I just changed mine a year ago. If you need that DIY, it's gonna be linked down below. And what's interesting is even though that video is a year old now, in the past month, as the weather's gotten colder, that video has seen a big spike in views. So I know that this is a seasonal phenomenon, but if you suspect that your battery is on its way out, maybe your car is struggling to start up, or you've got a battery that's more than five years old, get it tested now. If you go to any auto parts store, they'll be happy to test it for free. They'll test your battery and your alternator. Make sure that both of those are good. Don't let your car leave you stranded and take care of it now. You don't wanna be doing this in the middle of winter when it's zero degrees out and your fingers are all numb. Lastly, I'm gonna be spraying the underside of the car with fluid film. Shout out to my friend Austin for letting me know about this product. So like the name suggests, you spray this onto metal parts and it's going to leave an oil film that's going to protect those parts from rust and corrosion. Now, luckily for us BMW owners, the underside of our car is already covered with plastic paneling that keeps a lot of things clean and dry for the most part, but there's still some parts exposed like the rear subframe, differential, and some of the suspension components that we can spray this on. So let's jack up the car and get to it. So taking a look under the car, you're gonna notice that it is super clean down here. So this car actually came from Florida and I've driven it in the snow a couple times, but it's never really seen a full on Michigan winter. It's never been like caked in road salt and all that other crap. So 
very minimal rust maybe a little bit on some of the hardware there as you're going to see and then a tiny bit starting on the differential so the whole point of the fluid film is to protect all of this stuff so that it doesn't rust out in the future Spray this stuff on heavily, hitting parts from every angle you can reach. I should mention, you don't want to get this on your exhaust or it'll smoke and it could become a fire hazard. When I got done, I wiped off the overspray on the exhaust with engine degreaser. Check it out, I sprayed everything that I could see and reach and I think I did a pretty good job here in the back. I'm no uh, professional by any means. This job would be a lot easier with a lift, but sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. The cool thing about this stuff is that it doesn't drip surprisingly, and I sprayed a lot on some of these parts and there are no drips on the floor. So I think that that is pretty cool, but uh, let's go do some of the stuff on the front and we should be good to go here. You can also spray the inside of the drains on your trunk and doors. I looked at my Avenger for inspiration on where to spray it. So here is a perfect use case. For some reason that I'll never understand, the Bilstein B16 coilovers on the rear shocks, they're painted yellow, but for some reason on the fronts, they're just raw aluminum. And as you can see from two years of just driving in the rain, not even snow, but just rain, um, the shock tube is all corroded. Now, had I applied the fluid film right when I got these, this would have been a non-issue. But the cool thing is you can spray fluid film right onto this corroded surface and it will keep it from getting worse. I tried my best to spray what I could see, but again, I probably could have done a much better job with a lift. The links for everything that I just showed in the video are gonna be down below in the description. Feel free to check those out. And then also leave a comment and let us know some of your winter preparation tips. We would love to hear those. Now I know someone's gonna ask, what about snow tires? So yes, it does snow where I live, but every road that I personally drive on gets plowed right away. It's one of the few instances where I see the plows go by and I think, wow, that's my tax dollars actually being used for something productive. So just for me, for my own personal use case, uh, since I've lived in this house, I have just not really needed them. I could probably count on one hand the number of times I've actually driven on a snow covered surface since I've lived here. So I'm not saying that there's no merit to them, just for me personally, I have not felt the need to have a designated set of winter wheels and tires, but that's just me. So yeah, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys in the next one.